Hi there and welcome back. This is Sean from The Velvet Attic and I thought I'd quickly do a video for you today on some of our new silk papers which are becoming very popular. It's so exciting. We have some lovely new designs I've done that have come out and on today's video what I'd like to do is actually, and I'll flash a picture from the end for you on here, is show you how to apply our silk paper to a bought lamp. This is a little lamp I purchased from Sheet Street actually for about 120 Rand. Um, so not expensive at all. It has a fabric shade and of course I could chalk paint the base if I wanted to but I'm actually going to go for this old parchment sort of look to it. So I'm not going to paint this. But what I am going to do is apply silk papers to the shade and just pretty it up. I'm going to do a couple today. Um, just to show you how to go about doing this. But before I start, let, let me explain some of the new silk papers we have. If you don't know about our silk papers, they are fairly new. We launched them at Hobby X this year in March, and um, oh, they've, they've done very well. But we're bringing out new designs, which is very exciting. And in front of you right now is one of our newest designs um, in the Velvet Attic range called Trashic de Paris. And it actually corresponds with this design. It is in plastic, but I hope you can see it. Um, of Our Lady on the Stairs. I hope you can see that. We have a Lady on the Stairs number one, which is a big A3 of her. And then you can actually get the sheet like this with an A4 and an A5 and two A6s um, for your smaller projects, you know, little book boxes or jewelry boxes or anything that can work. I think jewellery boxes are quite stunning in your boudoir or dressing room. Um, and this script one here actually corresponds with this piece. Um, but of course you don't have to use them all together in that and the shade isn't a very big surface so I'm just going to work with this one today. Then what I have also here to show you is our Birdie Darling. This is a Birdie Darling one that we've done and included in our range and we have her in A4 and I'll lift her a bit for you as well. Um, we've just enhanced her a bit with some script and that just to fill out and she's available um, on the silk papers in a full A3 and then in divided sizes like this once again for smaller sheets just for those that might not do furniture or bigger surfaces. So this is Birdie Darling. Um, and we also have a beautiful birdie darling in our water slide transfer range uh, where you actually have the old parchment paper and that with the old music cover and that on it. So it's quite stunning. Then um, we design uh, the exclusive ranges for Petite Rouge as a lot of you might know. Uh, this is one of our new <laughs> exclusive Petite Rouge designs we've done for them. Uh, which is available and going into the stockist now. This is Mary Le Pen that I designed um, that I think is just going to be absolutely stunning if when used on pieces and that. So uh, we're all a little bit bunny mad at the moment and bunnies with crowns and bunnies with flowers and so yes, bunnies we are. <laughs> and then this is another script one to add to their range. Uh, Fabrique de Bruderies, which is uh, lovely trumpet flowers with an old advert um, and an old uh, invoice. So this can also be used with the existing scripts in their range and it just gives you more versatility. Remember the paper, silk paper, once dry is opaque. So it's not going to be like when you use serviettes and you've got to use them over light colours, you can do them over dark colours. The paper is strong enough to actually sit with a craft knife and cut between if you just want your trumpet to flower so you just cut between first and then come along with your scissors on the outside um, so you can do it that way too or full sheets or sections or whichever you want to do so what I'm going to do now is just to start I'm going to show you how I'm going to separate these because of the material I actually fortunately had the choice of purchasing my lamp in a creamy beigey colour uh, which will actually lend to this parchment paper look so I don't really need to paint my shade if I did need to paint my shade and let's say it was white and I didn't want this on because you'll get that old uh, creamy tinge of paper I would be inclined to maybe paint using one of our creams in that um, in the velvet attic vintage paint and I would paint my shade 
with the chalk paint, vintage chalk paint. A couple of coats, each coat letting it dry, and then once it's dry, I'd apply it in the same process I'm going to use now. So you have that choice. If you can't get a cream or beige lamp, go ahead, buy a different color, paint it up. Um, I'll explain to you how to seal it as well. So what you can do is you can take our Velvet Attic Vintage Varnish, which is available in a matte satin or gloss. Uh, it is a water-based polyurethane varnish. It can it be used over many different surfaces, including I'm actually going to use it to adhere the paper to this. Um, it's heat resistant and scuff resistant, so a lot more durable than your standard craft varnish. Um, so let's jump into it and carry on. I'm not going to prep this because as I said, it's already in its color. If you have painted, make sure it's dried and cured enough. So let's start by separating our pieces we want to use. So the most important thing I've got to do is make sure that whatever I separate here and use on there fits and obviously anything that goes over or overlaps I will just make sure that I tear those pieces off or break them off later which I'll show you how to do. Um, she is I think our focal point really on this paper and she runs above this script here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just separate it here um, the silk paper, not that it's made of silk, it is a silk finish we get with it. I'm going to take just a round brush with water on it and I'm just going to run along under my script here with water, make sure that it absorbs through like that. I try not to have a dead straight line, I prefer wavy lines. And then I'm going to just start pulling hold it on the one side, pull it on the other and I'm going to start separating along there. Now what this does is it gives you a bit of a fuzzy edge and once I put that fuzzy edge down onto my lampshade um, it will blend into the sides. You're not going to see any sharp edges and I think that is once again the beauty of this paper. So, let's separate the top here You can do it without the water, but it really is just easier if you wet it because it just follows that line of water. You don't have to worry. If you've got a little bit of script like there, I'll just pull along. Okay, so I've separated that piece. I'm actually just going to lay the lamp down here and just have a look at how it fits. Now remember that your lamp does taper towards the top. And um, I'm not inclined to want to have to snip edges in that but I quite like how it just wraps around that whole front area but I do want to go around my lamp so as you can see on these edges we're straight so those we need to fuzz out and I'm going to do that now for you so I'm going to run just a bit of water along here and I'm just going to pull those edges there we go. that's a lot better than a dead straight edge and it will just blend into the fabric when we adhere it and here I'm going to also just run along over there same thing those off. It just finishes it. It just makes it neater. It's going to be nice. So there's our first piece which as I said will look really pretty. Let me just move my brush there. Limited space under the camera. Follow the blue dot. Okay so <laughs> here is how we are looking and you see even if I don't if I had an area let's say a little bit like that I don't think you'd notice as once it's in there because it'll just blend. Or on the shade so yeah I'm gonna work with this this I, I like what's happening here I might just lift it slightly up but I'm not too phased if maybe I'll just drop it slightly there that'll work nicely I think over there okay so that's my first piece and then I need to work out what else I'd like to use so let's separate a few more pieces here um, 
I do like this one here. This is also an interesting piece. Um, I like this Grand Hotel de Reservoir. So let's separate this. As you can see, the water just really makes it easy. Any water, tap water, whichever works for you. And of course, you can see I went in a bit. I don't want that always perfect. I like everything a little bit uneven and different. Right, so there we go. That can come off. And once again, we're left with a straight bit. So we do need to, on this piece, I think, I'm just going to bring it in a bit like that. Let it just kink in a bit. There, yeah, that's great. I'll just use the other hand. I'm sorry if it's blocking the picture a bit, but it has to be there to just support as I pull the paper. So that's a lovely piece too, you see. So I quite like that. That could work behind. But let's just separate a few more so I've got a bit more to play with. And of course there's this lovely postage stamp here. Uh, with fleur de lis and old stamps on. And, and we're all going mad for script and parchment and ephemera at the moment. So let's move that up so you can see better. That's it. Let's straight that edge. Edge. And if there's any pieces left over, I've just got a file I put everything in. And when I'm actually making stuff and um, when I get the time to make the stuff, I fish them out and I use them on other things I'm busy with. And they can come in on other sets. And the, the, the ephemera, which is so nice with these in the mono, is that um, all of them can work. Whether you've bought Petite Rouge or Velvet Attics, they can combine. Um, they all work together, so I think that's really nice. I don't know if I'm going to use that piece over there. So let's just have a look. Here's the front of my lamp, so of course I want to put her on the front of my lamp. There we go. And then on the back of my lamp, I think we want to definitely bring in our Paris Hotel. So that will work about, yeah, so that will fit. So we'll put that in, and then if I need to, I can always use the other, but I'll get the first piece down first. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to work with a lamp here, so let's hope this little boy doesn't roll around. <laughs> he will. Right, so we can see where the back is because of the join. So I'm just going to make sure my center's there. And um, I'm going to work at a slight angle there, so I hope you can see what I'm actually doing. Okay, so here we are, ready to start. All our pieces are separated. I've taken a flat synthetic um, nylon brush, nothing fancy. I just prefer the short handle in that. So using this brush, using our Velvet Attic uh, varnish in matte. I do prefer matte for me personally, if it's something of mine. And I'm now going to take, I've dampened my brush with water and I'm going to now take my varnish and I'm going to paint it all the way onto the fabric. Fabric is obviously going to suck up the varnish, which is fine. Now the trick part, this is why I actually wanted to show you the lamp. Um, a lot of people say to you, oh, but it moves and it's not a hard surface and how would I do it? And So I just want to show you what I'm going to do. So of course the first coat, I'm just letting it suck in there. I'll just add more as I go. You could also, as an alternative, wet it. But just be careful you don't put too much water and then affect the consistency of your varnish, which in turn will affect your um, adhesive properties. Right, so I'm putting it on. Now I'm not going to go all the way around, okay? 
I'm covering basically the first half or so. Just to get some of that excess on. That looks alright. Okay, so now I'm going to take the silk paper. Remember the first piece we did? Just place her, where's my center? There we go, I want to put her here. And about there. Yep, that looks good. So about there, and I'm going to just push it down with my hands so it holds onto that glue. Remember, I haven't gone the whole way with glue, okay? So what we need to do is check where the glue ends here and just slip underneath a little bit more glue where it may have been a bit short that will work so let's make sure that goes down and let's do the same and this is what's so nice you see how durable it is and lift because I had a little crease there I didn't want I'm going to just work that down and I'm going to just do the same over here. Okay, let's get this side down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on top. I need a little bit more here. Okay, so I'm going to now come on top with my varnish straight onto it trying to work from the outside like the middle to the outside so that if there's any bubbling increasing we sort of pull those air bits out to the edge don't worry about the bits that go over the edge because we will remove those most important though is that we actually get it attached to the edge. And then, if you can see what I'm doing there, make sure your fuzzy edge there is definitely down. Spread your glue out or varnish. This works fine with Mod Podge as well in our range. Not so much with the paper glue because, of course, our base is material. So. You would want to use our Mod Podge or our um, varnish for this. So I think that side is great. I'm just going to come up this way a bit. I'm going to work in the center now, where she is. And pull her over. Spread out your varnish. I love the colouring because as you can see it works with this beige too beautifully. Got to work. I've got a bit of a bubble here that I need to just push out. You know as the material works. If you find it's moving too much you can put your hand behind and just give it that little bit of reinforcement if you find it's moving too much. It does have that little bit of plastic in there that you can use. Um, as a defense when you're pushing or resistance but if you find it's moving too much then this is what you need to do bear in mind as it dries it's going to pull and shrink a bit um, so if little minor bubbles and pieces will disappear all right so what I have to do on this side now is I need to make sure that I get this edge down here so I'm going to put a little bit more well, I don't know if you can see a very awkward piece to do. Huh? Put this here with our glue and varnish. I say glue, so I'm using it as a glue. And um, I'm just going to push that down. There we go. And coming back from the center where I was busy. I'm going to continue to work outwards, making sure you see where it's a little bit short there. Now that's what I was talking about. It's actually going to be perfect. 
because it works with that beige. So if you don't get your beige lampshade, like I said before, don't stress about it. Even if it's a black lampshade, it doesn't matter. Base coat over it with some of our vintage chalk paint and um, allow each coat to dry, two to three coats. If you find you need to, you can always thin down the paint a bit with water as you're brushing it on. And then um, once you dry, go ahead and do the same thing as I'm doing now. It'll work perfectly. So let's go all the way to the end. I think my 120 Rand Sheet Street <laughs> lamp is going to be awesome. Very excited about that. I've got another one I'm going to show you at the same time while this side dries. Because I won't be able to work on the other side and show you until it's dried. So let's just make sure our varnish is on. I'm going to spread it out. You can see it just blends. It looks like newspaper or parchment or old document. And then I'm actually just going to hope you can see what I've done there. It's holding nicely. Just double check that all these are down there. It does look good. It's down. Okay, now I'm going to put that aside to dry and I'm going to show you the other one I'm busy with. Let's put that over there. Now I did already separate some pieces. Basically, I took our Papillon's paper and I separated. This has been a very popular paper of ours since we launched. It's a combination of the grayscale ephemera, um, a beautiful Papillon design and header, and then all the butterflies and moths and all in there. So I separated them and then this one where they're a bit too close as you can see I've actually just left them as one piece. So my idea was this actually was in one piece on the paper as it comes and this part just looks so nice on the lampshade so I separated it which will work beautifully um, and I'm not going to use this piece but I am going to use these two. This will be my my uh, front and my back, oh my front and my back, and then these will be in between. So let's get those going. So I've got the same another cream one because I thought well I'm doing this whole thing. And I'm also going to start in the middle here. So I'm going to be tearing off here where I'm adding the water now. Remember the water helps us pull it off without damaging any part that still adhered to the shade on the lamp. So I'm just going to pull those bits off. You can have gloves on if you want latex gloves or whatever. I'm going to come back now and just make sure that I get all these little fuzzy bits underneath my shade all adhered back onto the back inside of the shade. So I'm actually going to just turn it over. And just make sure that we are definitely down. Just need 
tinted off, as I said before. I think this will make a lovely little lamp on your side table or dressing table, in your dressing room or bedroom or whatever. Especially with the theme and the lady and the three chic. Okay, so as you can see, that's where we are right now. All down. And I place that aside to dry. And I'm going to grab my papillon and I'm going to do the same again. All right, so what we want to do is we're going to follow the same principle that we did now. Um, on the first piece, I'm going to take this Paris Grand Hotel one. And my whole point of this was that I wanted to put it along the back here. You can see there. So I'm going to take my brush again with varnish. Same what we did before. Okay, so look at that. That's looking lovely. I'm very excited about that. And that's my front, as you can see. And that's drying. So I'm going to just smooth. smooth that out. Um, I'm going to put it aside to dry and go back to our butterflies, our papillons. And uh, yeah, that's great. I'm very excited about that. So here's papillon. <laughs> and we want to work on the back now. And remember, I had this other section that I separated it was that part it actually looks like that as a solid picture on our sheet so what I did was I just took water and separated it as I mentioned before so now I'm going to work with that top section because it would be too high for this lamp if I didn't um, and on the back here this is where I want to place the papillon okay so it's going to be about there that's great yeah, so that's where I'm going to work now. Back to our brush and our varnish. Get it into that crease of the of the join of the shade. Let's work it all in here. I've been dying to show you guys how to do this, just time. Very, very busy with orders and designs. Lots of new exciting things coming out very soon. So keep your eyes peeled. New designs for our water slides. Water slides are as popular as ever, if not more. And um, we have a very, very good quality to our products that we pride ourselves on. Our paper we import ourselves. It's considered the top water slide paper in the world. And like many things in this craft industry, you get what you pay for. So, 
be rest assured that you will get a stunning product from the Velvet Attic. Okay, let's just keep going here. I'm busy with my daughter's room at the moment, so I'm actually thinking I might just do her in a shade as well, just to use in the room. Next to her bed, I like this idea. Right, I've got a nice coat on there. So, back to our paper. There. And we're going to want to put it up there. Don't stress too much because you can lift this. It's just to, yeah, I like how that's laying. Yeah, I've got a crease here, so you can just lift and stretch it and work it out again. But that crease there where the join is, so you just have to make sure it goes there. I suppose you could take a brayer or our roller like we do with our papers and you could brayer it, but when there's not a lot of resistance you'd have to put your hand behind and underneath. Okay, so let's go back here and work it in. This piece we'll have to tear the excess off like we did on the front piece. Make sure it goes all the way. Make sure you, all your edges are down. Let's carry on this side. And if you're ever not sure on how to use our products, we're going to be doing lots more videos. We do have some on our Facebook page, Velvet Attic. Arts and Crafts, and um, yes, our website's coming, big excitement there. Um, so that'll make life a bit easier. At the moment we do sell on Biddle Bar, you just contact us directly, and we'll forward you all the links and catalogues and everything you need. Um, stockers, you're welcome to contact us. Always looking for new stockers and exciting. Got a lot of people wanting our products. Um, and we'd love to forward the business to you and let them come and buy and do workshops with you guys. So. Let's get that. Here we go. That looks so pretty. I love how the colour shows up on that cream like that. On that butterfly. And I think while it just sets a bit, before I uh, tear off those fuzzy bits, I'm going to actually get the butterflies. And let's just see where we can put them, because we could do them at the same time. So I have this nice area here, and I really do like this green one. And he's a nice big one, so I think he could work very nicely there. So I'm going to actually put him down while we're talking <laughs> and waiting for it to dry. Just make sure this is coated. Remember, I stopped short, so make sure it's wet again with varnish. Like so. Now I'm going to take him, and generally, I don't think we want to make him fly down. Preferably at an angle towards there or towards the front. Um, it might be nice to actually fly him towards the front, I think. So we're going to put him about there, like so. I actually want to lift him probably about there. A little back. Okay, I like that. Okay, so let's get this one down here. There'll be nothing to tear off here, so this we can just push down. So our varnish will dry clear over these 
in most surfaces, every surface actually, it dries clear. It's non-yellowing. I personally have used my this varnish uh, for over 20 years. So it really is stunning. I see all my paintwork and canvas work with it. And the matte is stunning, it really is. Our satin's gorgeous, our gloss is also when we do Russian painting and we want that high gloss finish, our gloss is really lovely. There we go. Okay. I think that's great. Let's look at the other side. So that's how we're looking. Now I'm going to turn it and I've got some area there for smaller ones. So as I mentioned before, you don't have to use all of them, but Let's use a couple. I like this one looking like it's about to land over there somewhere. So let's put that one there. Yeah, a little bit more of an angle here. I think we'll put it like that. Okay, and then we'll probably... I do like the mauve, either the mauve or the teal. Maybe the mauve, we've had that green one. So let's put a mauve one over here. Also flying up. Okay. Alright, so that's where we're going to place them. I'm going to once again just make sure everything's wet with enough varnish. I'm going to overlap on some of this paper, so I just want to make sure we have there as well. Don't do any harm to put it on. Okay, so like I said, this one's going to go at the bottom. Like so. And this one, going to go. Just don't want to cover my right in there. About there. Great, now we're just going to go on top. I'm not going to break that little edge off, so I just fold it under and varnish it down. If you are using a modge to do this, Modge Podge or our Modge Podge or different brand Modge Podge. Um, remember, Modge is just a glue, so you do still need to varnish on top of it. So the paper generally goes transparent while it's wet and you're using it, but the minute it starts to dry from the outside in, you'll see all the colour will come back. Like that, so that's how we're looking. I'll just turn it here for you. Let me get it in straight again. So this is how we're looking on the lamp. Okay, I think we can now sort out these fuzzy bits. There we go, that can dry. So we have a lovely Le Deux Papillons lamp. Could work in, like I said, your dressing room, your bedroom, your daughter's bedroom, wherever. Uh, butterflies are popular and they're very pretty. So that's our Papillon. And then this here is our, it's very chic. De Paris, our boudoir, our 
pretty ephemera and script and our art mover lady I think she's lovely so that's what's going to happen now it's going to dry I'm going to come back I'm going to do about another coat or two on probably two coats and then there we go it's going to get in place but like I said before if you want to paint, paint the base you can too it is a ceramic base just clean it off with some mess uh, air dry don't wipe it dry just let it air dry after your methylated spirit spot and then straight on with the chalk paint let each coat dry very nicely make sure you smooth it out and you do a couple of extra coats then you can go ahead and you can stencil a bit if you need to or dry brush or glaze or anything to your heart's content um, and then once again you would varnish as well so two lovely <laughs> lamps bought at Tree Street for 120 Rand and you can just do them up in your room and decorate your side tables. So till next time, have fun.